Jesus, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Wow, what a blessing. I want to thank God in a very special way for giving us yet another chance to hear the word of God, to fellowship together, to connect, to hug each other on social media, to shake each other's hands, you know, online. What a great blessing. I welcome all of you and thank you for tuning in. All our online church from everywhere. I want to appreciate all of you that are even tuned in from outside the country, outside Kenya, in the U.S., Rose, and all the other wonderful people that are connecting with us uh, from all over, from Saudi Arabia. I want to appreciate all of you. I want to appreciate uh, the family of JCC Islands. So thank you so much. I want to appreciate others who are from the country and you're just part of this wonderful online church. God bless you and do you well. I am excited and honored every time I come online to minister the word of God and to connect with you. So therefore, I want to request all of you to share the video and I want you to invite as many people as you can. Start off a watch party even as we get ourselves ready to have an incredible time in the presence of the living God. Amen. Before we pray, let me appreciate a few people that are here. Glory be to God. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me appreciate a few people here by God's grace. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me get myself together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Okay. We're going to get myself. Okay. Beautiful. I want to appreciate all of you that are tuned in. Thank you. Jackie, God bless you. Detta, God bless you. Waringa, God bless you. Hilda, God bless you. Beautiful. Amen. Uh, Frederick Makuroch, God bless you. I say thank you to all of you. Sister Monica Gigi, God bless you. What a blessing. Priscilla Wajiko, God bless you. Amen. I see all of you, and I want to just say thank you. May the Lord do you well in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you that are coming online, please share the video. Invite as many people as you can, even as we get ready for an experience in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your power, and we thank you for your angels. We thank you for the power to deliver from the uttermost. And deliver your people from the dungeon and cause them to occupy seats of honor. Receive honor, Jesus. Thank you for the power of the mighty Holy Spirit. Tonight, Father, as you share your word, let your anointing flow. Let your glory be experienced. Let your people be delivered, be healed, be enlightened. Let doors open in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are stranded in one way or another, today I prophesy a miracle. God, you know what they need. They are your people and your children, oh God. Don't allow your children to suffer. Father, you're a wonderful father. Therefore, I pray, let your mighty spirit touch all your children in a very special way in the name of Jesus. Speak to us tonight and receive all the glory, even as we hear the testimonies of your power. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody type Amen. Glory be to God. Today I'm talking about breaking family curses, part three. And today we conclude for now. That's the best we could be able to do. And then tomorrow we are going to have an incredible time of prayer. 7.30 to 8.30. Then from... 10 to 12, we'll have another time of prayer. Tonight is teaching, and uh, I'm excited to have that opportunity. I also want to take this opportunity and appreciate all of you that sent your money to the needy yesterday. 100 bob, 200 bob, 300 bob. Most of you sent more than 200, 300, 500. Somebody sent 2,000. So many of you responded. And today I want to still ask you to do the same. You know, if you can do a minimum of 200, um, 
10 people giving 200 that is 2000 i promise you it will do some shopping for somebody and uh, we just want to tap into the blessings we don't want to ignore know the plight of our brothers and sisters who are going through very very tough times i also want to speak to them that are feeling discouraged during this season our god is a faithful god and i want you to know don't allow the devil to cause your heart to sink take it to the lord in prayer and i'm praying with you and believing god with you that god will multiply testimonies and his wonders in your life in this season in the name of jesus christ um i want you to know that every coin you send is going to towards the needy and that will be a great blessing and uh, also i'll give my own contribution so that together uh we can be able to be a blessing breaking family curses proverbs 25 and verse 26 proverbs 25 and verse 26 the bible says when a good person gives in to the wicked it's like dumping garbage in a stream of clear water whenever somebody who's righteous walking with god gives in to curses and doesn't understand how to to cut them off it's like a very clean wonderful um stream of water and then garbage is directed to it and that is how many people's lives are their lives are clean they are working with god but the enemy is trying to push on garbage from the foundation or from whichever quarters but today we want to stop those garbages and begin to enjoy the blessings and the kind of life that god has ordained for us galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 and 14 galatians 3 and verse 13 and 14 the bible says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles in christ jesus that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith brothers and sisters curses is a serious plague that is plaguing many families and many people a curse is an evil force that sponsors cycles of negativity adversity calamity either upon a person or upon a family a curse is a force of empowerment and to failure reproach delay sorrow and frustrations a curse is a sentence of pain and to harm and to discomfort and to disadvantage a curse is a dressing of disaster a dressing of rejection a dressing of misfortune a dressing of disappointment a curse is a force of hindrance a force of limitation a force of resistance a curse is a plague of trouble a plague of problems a plague of distress what is a curse a curse creates an atmosphere of scarcity it empowers near success syndrome almost there but you don't get there a curse is responsible for breakthroughs only in the realm of the dream but in the physical nothing tangible nothing enviable is happening but i have good news for you today god wants to terminate every curse in your life and every curse in your family if you are a child of god if i let me say this a child of god suffering under the power of curses is equivalent to a clean water a stream of water and garbage is entering therein if we can stop the flow of that curse you'd be surprised how much most of our families most of our lives are going to enjoy today i want to tackle how we break those curses 
But let me give you a prophetic word that I believe is a reality from this day by the power of God. Jeremiah 31, 29 to 30. Jeremiah 31, 29 to 30. In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Everyone who eats the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. God is saying, a day is coming, and I prophesy it is today. I confirm the prophetic word. It is from this day. Aha. When the punishment of the sins of the father won't chant to the children. No longer shall the fathers chew mogoka. And then children will develop cavities. He that sins, he's the one who's, go, who's going to bear the weight of the iniquities. A day is coming, ladies and gentlemen, when no longer parents will visit witch doctors. And this is the day. And then the consequences of visiting evil gods comes upon the children of the grandchildren. A day has come when those who shed innocent blood, they have to face their iniquities. But the enemy is not going to push the punishment to you. We refuse that in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to type and say, I refuse it in the name of Jesus Christ. When someone sins, they will suffer the consequences of their sins themselves. In other words, no more demonic carryover in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, from this day, the song that everybody must understand is the old song that we used to sing. Kila mtu ata uchukua mzigo wake mwenyewe na kila mtu ata toa Habari za ke mwenyewe bereza mungu siku hiyo ikikuja. Yeah. So this day has come. Everybody must bear their own burdens. The burdens of our forefathers. Let them bear them. As for us, we are cutting off ourselves from all those kind of sewages. And we must live the life that God has ordained for us. If you are agreeing with me, shout Type Amen. So what are the basis? What are what gives us the basis um, or the ground to secure our release from every form of curse and from every form of family curse? Number one, and before I do that, consider this scripture Romans 8, verse 28. Romans 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. Hear me? In the kingdom of God, God has many weapons in his armory. Most of the times, it takes combination of several weapons for somebody to be able to secure their breakthrough. This is what the scripture is saying. He's saying many things work together for, a, for the destiny to be good. For the good to be delivered, many things work together. So, sometimes God will not deliver you through one principle. And you cannot be able to become all that God has called you to become, but just through one principle. There are several things that work together to deliver your breakthrough. So, I'm going to teach you several things that are the basis of your deliverance. So that your deliverance will not only be secure, but strong and permanent. In the name of Jesus Christ. Aha. Number one. Deliverance through the revelation of the truth. Look. Let me begin. Proverbs 11 and verse 9. Proverbs 11 and verse 9. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. One of the greatest tools of deliverance is knowledge of God's word. As I'm preaching the word of God every Tuesday to, to Friday, or rather Tuesday to Thursday, and then Friday prayer, you know what is happening? I'm arming you. I'm actually ushering you to a place of deliverance. 
by the power of God's word. Luke 4 and verse 18 and 19. Luke 4 and verse 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, wherefore he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the contrite of heart. I love verse 19. Hear me very clearly. To preach deliverance to the captives. So deliverance can be preached. As I'm preaching, deliverance is happening. It's fantastic. And sight to the blind. To set and liberty those who are bruised. It's fantastic. So deliverance is not only the demonstration by laying hands and casting out devils. Preaching is deliverance by itself. If at the greatest level of deliverance happens through the preaching of God's word. And that is what I'm doing even right now. Can I hear somebody agree with me and type amen? John 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What is to make? To make is to cause something to exist. To make is to manufacture. To make is to bring into existence. To make is to produce something. To make is to generate something. The knowledge of the truth has in itself supernatural creative power that manufactures the reality of that truth. And that's why the preaching of God's word is the greatest privilege to a believer. Aha! I was listening to a testimony of a wonderful lady who used to suffer nightmares every night. Nightmares and scary demonic dreams. Then one day she came across the scripture in Psalms 127 and verse 2. Psalms 127 and verse 2. For he gives sleep to his beloved. So the first thing she concluded, that sleep is a gift from God. Aha. The second thing she concluded, if God is the giver of this wonderful sleep, the devil cannot be, is not supposed to spoil it. Then... She came along with the next scripture. The next scripture, the scripture says in the, it is Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 12. Ecclesiastes 5, 12. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. So he says, he said, aha, I labor for God. I labor in my business. My sleep is supposed to be sweet. Before she slept, she said, in the name of Jesus, today, by the revelation of God's truth, devil, my sleep is sweet and it's a gift from God. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. From that day, she's never had dreams of uh, nightmares until forever. The revelation of God's truth can manufacture your deliverance. It's fantastic. Let me go to number two. Deliverance through the blood of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let me give you a short lesson concerning the blood of Jesus Christ. Leviticus 17 and verse 14. For the life of all flesh is in its blood. Aha. The blood of Jesus Christ, it is the life of Jesus Christ himself. Curse is deadness. So whenever the blood of Jesus Christ comes into play, the resurrection power destroys the death of every curse. The blood of Jesus is a weapon that the enemy can tackle. In the blood, there's something we call deoxyribonucleic acid. Don't worry. DNA. Aha. DNA teaches us, brothers and sisters, that you get your blood from your parents. That means blood is passed from one generation to the next through bloodline. Science teaches us, brothers and sisters, that your blood is like a fire. It has fires and that has folders in it containing various documents. For example, one of the documents is your character. It is reflected in the blood. Your skin color is reflected in the blood. Genetic formations are stored in the blood. Your looks are transported in the blood. 
Have you wondered how we look like our parents? And uh, you can imagine from the way we, we were created or we were conceived in the womb of our mothers, everything is in the blood. That look, even your voice. Some people, they speak like their parents. Some of them, their laughters are like their parents. You know, the truth be told, the same way we are able to get these positive attributes, the same way there are also negative liabilities that are also passed through the blood. Generational curses are transported through the blood. Human blood is loaded with both negative and positive documents. If, if for, for, for today's illustration. So it could be loaded, your blood could be loaded with generational infirmities, hypertension, cancer, uh, diabetes, and all those wonderful things that we've talked about in the previous discussions. You know, it could be loaded with evil covenants. Yeah. It could be loaded with witchcraft covenants. They are projected in the blood. It could be loaded with evil dedications. Yeah. Sometimes you wonder where demons stay for years. Somebody for years. I prayed for people that are 40 years old. And the demon says, I entered during birth. And it's like, where have you been all these years? Some of these spirits, they are in the blood. It's a mystery. It could be loaded with poverty. It could be loaded with marital failure. Now, if you don't believe demons exist, <laughs> wake up. <laughs> wake up. Don't, don't, don't wake up to the reality of what is happening and what has been there. It could be loaded with generational anger. Some people, they are so angry and uh, you can tell their anger is just like their parents. You know, you can even say the grandfather used to be as angry as him. So how did that negative attribute, how did it jump from the grandfather to the person? And sometimes they share the name. It's because there's something that is transferred through the files of our blood. Aha. Uh -huh. It could be loaded with premature death. It could be loaded with divorce. Yeah. The Bible also says that actually the blood speaks. Yeah. And the blood of Abel was speaking revenge. So the blood can also be speaking. It can speak frustration. Voices of death. Voices of poverty programmed in the blood. Yeah. Voices of evil covenants can be programmed in the blood. It's a mystery, brothers and sisters. So when we consider all that, I want to teach you something. When we apply the blood of Jesus Christ, when we give our life to Jesus Christ, when we take the Holy Communion, what happens? What happens is the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ comes and effects changes in our blood. Number one, the blood of Jesus Christ has erasing power. Colossians 2 verse 14 and 15 colossians 2 verse 14 and 15 the bible says having wiped out the hard writing of requirements that was against us which was contrary to us wiped out the hard writings here and the bible says he has taken it out of the way having nailed it to the cross and then having disarmed principalities and powers. Because these documents are principalities and powers. These projections in the blood are principalities and powers. The Bible says the blood of Jesus erases them. Erases those documents. The blood of Jesus Christ is erasing every document of hypertension in your blood in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus has erasing power. It wipes out. Yeah, yeah. It uh, blots it out. It uh, obliterates. It uh, removes those documents, evil covenants in, the, in your blood. So they are not projections from your ancestral. But hear me. You must understand this revelation. Some of you may need to begin to pray in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I decree every document of infirmity in my blood be arrested in the name of Jesus Christ. You know how we pray? You know why we pray? We pray to enforce what has been done. Aha. Let me also give you the, the second thing the blood of Jesus does. Just a few things the blood of Jesus does. And I'm trying to teach a mystery. And this is the best that I can do for now. Because we're not talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. 
The blood of Jesus Christ is a cleansing blood. 1 John 1 verse 7 to 9. 1 John 1 verse 7 to 9. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from our sin. What is to cleanse? The Greek word for cleansing is katharizo. It means to make clean. It means to free from defilement of sins or faults. It means to fully and totally free someone from invisible powers and invisible character flows like anger, like pride, like stinginess. Yes, like some of the things I was telling you, anger, you can tell anger, you know, in the family. Those things, they are made clean. It's like purification. The blood of Jesus purifies you because these are all filthiness. These are all filthy spirits and powers that contaminates our blood and projects through our lives and through our characters. So right now I decree the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ upon your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. What else does the blood of Jesus do? I'm talking about the basis. That's why when you give your life to Jesus, this is supposed to be the reality. But then there's a devil who wants to intrude and enforce the past to continue. Yeah. This is the devil. This is, let me tell you the reality. The reality is the Egyptians that are trying to follow us across the Red Sea. So we must cause them to drown in the Red Sea so we can be able to enjoy our journey to the promised land. Otherwise, it, 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 they can easily cause us to live. We are born again, but we are living a life as if Jesus is not real. It, it's not going to happen. So the blood of Jesus Christ is a redeeming blood. You know, one day, um, I was driving in one of the roads in Nairobi, and I took the wrong turn, and I was arrested by a cop. Then I had to appear before the court in Kibera, Lokuts. And I remember I pleaded guilty, and I was charged some amount. Either 15,000, 10, 10 or 20, 10 to 20, they're around there, you know. And uh, I remember it took one of our pastors who came, went to the cashier, paid the money, then presented me with a receipt. Then I presented and I was released to, to go out. This is what happens, brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ, he came. We were all changed through many sins. Even from birth, you know, by the sins of Adam and Eve, inherited sins and our personal uh, 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 doings. But then Jesus Christ came. He paid with his own blood. You know, somebody had to die. The scripture says, the soul that sinneth must die. So he died so that you and I don't have to face death. So guess what? The blood of Jesus Christ becomes the receipt. You're supposed to present it before the devil and tell the devil, get from my life. But he became a curse. Yeah, he was cursed. So you can't curse, you cannot charge two men for the same sin. So Jesus Christ suffered the curse for the consequences of the sin. So he stood in your place. So therefore the blood of Jesus Christ becomes the receipt of your release. But I told you we, we have a Stubborn devil. That's what the Bible says. The weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. Because these revelations, they are supposed to arm you to enforce your victory and to tell the devil you are an nonentity, you are an illegality, you are an intruder. Curses are an intrusion in the lives of God's people. But if nothing is done, the status quo will remain. But you and I, we are doing something about it. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? Ephesians 1 and verse 7, the Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood. What is to redeem? To redeem is to buy back. Is to pay for the penalty. And then secure the release. 
So the blood of Jesus Christ secures the release from every form of curse. That is our basis of freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is a justifying blood. Romans 5 and verse 9. Romans 5 and verse 9. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Hear me? One day I had a very wonderful, amazing story about a particular woman that went somewhere, a missionary, went to a particular village to preach the gospel. And then after preaching for some time, and, uh, and it was all bushy, she said, God is calling me to go to the next village. But the journey from the village where she was preaching to the next village was an entire forest. And there was a famous lion that anybody who attempted to cross through the forest, they would be chewed, they would be eaten. But the lion was supposed to, was just when it would eat at least one person. It had no capacity to eat two people. You know what happened? The woman said, I'm going. God has spoken to me, I'm going. So the elders of the city, they said, ah, if you try to go, the lion will chew you. But she said, I must obey God, I'm going. One of the elders volunteered. He said, woman of God, I'll go ahead of you. When the lion gets to me, it will eat me. By the time you are coming, the lion will be full. Then you can just pass. That's what happened to us. Yeah. It was supposed to be you are dead. Yeah. And then Jesus said, I'll go ahead of you. I'll die for you. I'll satisfy the demand of justice. Then, when you come, you can just have a, you know, a wonderful journey through the forest of life. Hear me, brothers and sisters. All these lions and crocodiles and cobras, all these wild beasts like curses, they were satisfied by the death of Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus Christ was a human being and a God. It was an overpriced. He overpaid. So we are supposed actually to enjoy life and the enemy is not supposed to lay a claim on us. So, brothers and sisters, justifying blood, saying that it's a seed you never sinned because the penalty was paid. So when you say the curses come because of the sins of our forefathers, it's because somebody has not tackled it. Otherwise, if the, 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 for, for the born again Christian, that sin and that evil should not be allowed to continue. If you're hearing me, shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. Aha. The blood of Jesus Christ is sanctifying blood. Hebrews 13 and verse 12. Hebrews 13 and verse 12. Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. To sanctify is to set apart. So the blood of Jesus Christ sets you apart. You are in the umbrella of this family that is cursed. Then when you give your life to Jesus, it, God takes the blood of Jesus Christ, sets you apart. Yeah, you are disconnected from that family. And you join another family. And you become holy unto God. Yeah, so you don't suffer the consequences or the same uh, verdict and the same evil that everyone is suffering you must get out of that evil umbrella then begin to pray others out in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the blood of jesus christ is an overcoming blood revelation 12 and verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb what is to overcome it is to fully defeat what is to overcome it is to overthrow that means you need to employ the principle and the weapon of god's blood because it is a guarantee you shall fully overthrow and defeat every curse in the name of Jesus Christ. So the blood of Jesus Christ is not something just to say I'm born again. It's a weapon that you must use to enforce your victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Aha. But I want you to know that devil is a thief. The habit of a thief is to take more, is to take what does not belong to him. John 10, 10, he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Though in actual sense, the price was paid, he still wants to take what was paid for because he's wicked in his nature. There is no goodness in the devil. 
And that's why if you think you're born again and you won't be a fighter, and just because the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, is there, you're going to enjoy your liberty, then it's not going to happen. You have to know we are battling an evil Satan. Wicked Satan. There's no, it is wickedness all through. There is no goodness, not even a little drop of goodness in him. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? Let me say the last thing. The blood of Jesus Christ connects us to a family, to a new family of Abraham. Therefore, we get qualified to walk in generational blessings. Let me say this. For a born-again believer, the verdict is supposed to change from generational curses to generational blessings. Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cast is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham must might come upon us. Amen. And we must receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hear me. When you give your life to Jesus, God disconnects you. Your blood is disconnected from all the family, your biological family. And you get hooked up by the blood of Jesus Christ. You carry the genes of the family of Abraham. And therefore, the blessings of Abraham becomes your own personal experience. So hear me. We are changing generational curses into generational blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, this man who now you're hooked up to, he was rich in silver, gold, and livestock. He had a great name. He was a man that walked in power. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not supposed to, your life is supposed to, <laughs> to be a copy of the reality of Abraham. And uh, that is real Christianity. And I decree it is so from this day by the power of God's word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Aha. Let me go to the next thing that qualifies you to walk in the blessings of God. Number three is the force of prayer and fasting. Our basis of deliverance. Force of prayer and fasting. Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the burst of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. Curses are heavy burdens. Curses, they are bats or yokes of wickedness. To let the oppressed to go free. Today I decree freedom upon every oppressed person by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And to break every yoke. So fasting releases power that breaks chains. So one of the ways that you ensure that you stand in a place of victory, develop a practice of fasting and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew 17 and verse 21. Matthew 17 and verse 21. However, this does not go out except by prayer and fasting. There are some powers that are stubborn until you engage the next gear. Fasting takes you to the next dimension of power. And there are powers that are stubborn until somebody puts the plate aside and taps into the next dimension of power. So believers, brothers and sisters, we must embrace fasting. Yeah, the Bible says when you fast, not if you fast. Aha. Number four. It's the force of blessings that neutralizes curses. Numbers 23 and verse 8. Numbers 23 and verse 8. Today I'm talking about the basis or why you must, why deliverance is mandatory for you if you're born again. Now, how shall I cast whom God has not cast? If your family is projecting curses, but God is projecting blessings, hear me. Those blessings will swallow the curses. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 5. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 5. Nevertheless, the Lord your God was not willing to listen to Balaam. But the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God has loved you. Brothers and sisters, when the blessings of God are reigning in your life, 
no matter the projections that are coming from underneath you or from your family, what will happen is the blessing will swallow the curse. I want you to understand something, ladies and gentlemen, that the blessing is light. Curses are darkness. You will never see light unless linked with darkness. You will never see light having a quarrel with the darkness. Every time light appears, darkness will take cover. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 and verse 5, John chapter 1 and verse 5, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. The scripture here is saying that when light shines, it is too overwhelming for darkness. It means that light gives darkness total defeat. So if you accumulate blessings in your life, let me tell you, you are going to overwhelm every force of darkness and every force of curses that is being projected into your life. It, it's amazing. It's fantastic. <laughs> so therefore, anything that links you into the blessings, become a serious practitioner of the sin. Yeah. Become a serious, committed practitioner of everything the Bible teaches you. Everywhere the Bible says, blessed is the man. Or if you do this, you shall be blessed. Don't, don't just read it. Yeah. Become a practitioner of that. Accumulate so many blessings in your life. Yeah. Do you know, even in a big dam, if the dam is leaking, but there's too much water entering from different sources, yeah, the dam will fill up. Because if what is coming in is too much, and what is going out is too little. It's almost insignificant. So it doesn't matter what you're fighting and who is going to the witch doctor. You can accumulate blessings too much until every effort of the enemy to fight you becomes insignificant. Yeah. Let me give you a few, a few uh, channels that brings blessings into, into the lives of God's people. But before I do that, let me read for you Isaiah 10, 27 to 29. Isaiah 10, verse 27 alone. Isaiah 10, 27. The Bible says, So it will be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian will be removed from their shoulders and his yoke from your neck. For the yoke will be broken because of the fat. One way to break the yoke is to add weight. <laughs> yeah. So the yoke is on your neck. But your neck can become too fat until the yoke will break. So you can accumulate too many blessings until every cast breaks. Yeah. There are things that you cast out. There are things you have to grow. I'm telling you. There are demons you cast out. There are demons you have to grow. Yeah. Because you become too powerful, too mighty. Your spirit is too much powerful. Until the demon says, ha ha, let me just, let me just walk out. Yeah, too much power, too much fire. So the yoke on your neck become too fat. It will just break by itself. That's why I want you to accumulate the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. The blessings of God is like immunity. Sometimes you live around, there are too many viruses, too many bacteria. But if you keep on Pumping strength on your immunity. Well, bacteria will come on you, but the body is too strong. It will just strangle them. It will just incapacitate them. Yeah. It will just swallow them up. So there are so many sicknesses everywhere. But if your immunity is strong, you find that you don't get sick. That's why the greatest weapon of the enemy is to weaken the prayer life of a believer. Because the prayer life and the word life of a believer is the immunity. Then you become vulnerable for opportunistic infections. Then even if uh, somebody goes to the witch doctor, that power is strong to affect you. But if you're too strong, anybody can go to anywhere. In fact, when they appear before a witch doctor, <laughs> the witch doctor will just say, hey, please, we don't want trouble with him. We don't touch them. They are special. Because you're too much, you know, 
empowered. You are not a weakling. So brothers and sisters, during this season, it's time for us to feed ourselves with the word of God. It's time for us to fast and pray at least one hour every day, spending time in prayer, listening to messages. Come on, somebody. And getting our humility strong, then we are going to become too hot for the devil to tackle us. Can I hear somebody type, Amen? Some of the channels of the blessings, brothers and sisters. Number one is serving God. Exodus 23 and verse 25. For you shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. He shall take away sickness from you. Serving God, brothers and sisters, is fantastic. As we get back to the house of God, I want you to join a department. Do something. God will give us a chance to be back. Yeah, he will. Join something. Do some winning. Do something for God. Serving God attracts a blessing. Giving tithes and offering attracts a blessing. Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10. Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10. Hold up the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Brothers and sisters, you want multiplication? You want overflowing blessings? Honor God with your money. Honor God with your possession. Honor God with the first fruit. That is 10%. Don't even talk about Malachi 3.10. It's famous. But I'll read it. Bring all the tithes into the storehouses. That there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. I, if I will not open for you the widows of heaven. And pour you out such a blessing. Every time you see a blessing. Check the condition behind it. Commit yourself to it. Yeah. Accumulate too many blessings. Until you're too powerful for any witch doctor on earth to bring you down. Aha. Giving to the poor brothers and sisters accumulates blessings. I'm talking about you have too much light until darkness is helpless. Until they mark your case. This is a hopeless case as far as we are concerned. We, we, don't, talk, we don't, don't talk with that person. Psalms 41 verse 1 to 3. Psalms 41. Verse 1 to 3. Blessed is he who considers the poor. Yesterday I challenged him to send at least 200. Going, you know, from 200, at least 200. For us to be able to touch our poor people, you know, needy people. People who are so much in need. Feed several families. Today I want you to send. If you've never sent, send today. The number that is, that is there, you know, our team will send you the number. Send at least 200. Don't say it's literal. Don't say that, please. I beg you. Yeah. Because if 10 of us send 200, that is something. That is beautiful. Yeah. And let's feed a family. And let me tell you why. Because of Psalms 41, verse 1 to... I'm teaching you how to break curses. Yeah. Aha. Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. This is one principle that will keep you strong. No matter the calamities and the pandemics in the world. And he will be blessed on earth. Glory be to God. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. Is the blessing of feeding the poor, helping the poor. Don't forget the words of Jesus Christ. All of you who don't like giving, let me tell you, you are missing it big time. And anybody who spoiled us and our hearts towards giving is an enemy from hell to keep us from blessings. Haven't you considered the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Acts 20 35. Acts 20 35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ himself, who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. All of you every time, give me, give me, give me, give me. You don't want to give. Yeah, even 200 bucks, you don't want to give. Let me tell you, you're missing it. That is the mystery behind your monumental poverty. Aha. 
Obeying God opens channels for blessings. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. We have collected like almost, I think we have done 10,000 now. 10,000. And I want to ask all of you, send. If you want to send again, send again. Yeah. We all, even me, I'm giving my contribution. Me, I'm not giving to one, I'll give more. And I want to believe God that somebody will receive it and say a word to all of us. Somebody needed will say, thank you, God bless, wherever that money came from. And that will uh, provoke heaven to preserve us in this season and preserve our children in the future. Amen. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commands that I commanded today, the Lord your God will set you high above the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Overtake you means they'll go to your children and your children's children. Wow. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Are you obedient to God? Is the Lord telling you something and you're ignoring? Is God telling you to stop fornicating and you're still fornicating? Are there some things God is whispering? Is God telling you to give and you don't want to give? Is God telling you to forgive and you have refused to forgive? Disobedience will rob you of the blessings. Obedience to God will cause you to be too blessed. I prophesy that God will cause you to be too blessed until your enemies will be helpless and frustrated <laughs> because of the magnitude of the blessings that is flowing into your direction. Hallelujah. Let me say something else. Exodus 23 and verse 22. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies. That's good news. And an adversary to your adversary. You want God to be an enemy to your enemy? Obey God. That is your God told you, obey him tonight. Yes. Another channel of blessings is show mercy. Build somebody out from a crisis. Matthew 5 and verse 7. Blessed. Every time you see that word, get excited. Are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The other way you accumulate blessings in your life is giving gifts to servants of God. Matthew 10 verse 42. Matthew 10 and verse 42. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, a preacher, a communicator of the word of God, whether it is your HOD, somebody who does something for Jesus, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Matthew 10, 41, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. You know what is a prophet's reward? It's the blessing he speaks. When you give a prophet something and he speaks a blessing, why don't you send something to your pastor? Yeah, tell him I just thought about you and send and say, you know, my pastor, mom, you know, yeah, as the Lord blesses you. It's a secret I hold dear. I do that and I'll never stop doing it to servants of God. Hallelujah. Number six, verse 23 to 26. Speak to Aaron, his sons and his sons saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. So priests were mandated to bless. Yes. This is how you shall bless. In other words, priests and prophets are custodians of blessings. Let's agree to the way God likes his order of doing things. Because if we argue with him, it will never change. It has been there before us. It will outlive us. And those who are lying with it's like the debate of tithing. It was there before us. It continues today. It will outlive us. But everybody who aligns to it benefits in its season. <laughs> and I choose to be a beneficiary of what God commands me to do. I believe it's the same with you. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? There are people who you should provoke their words of God bless you by just sending something to them. Because they have a covenant with God that is intimate. They are servants of God. And you just want them to send an SMS. God bless you. That's all you want to provoke. And that is wisdom by itself. Hallelujah. We can go into the Bible. Those principles are all over in the Bible. 
but we that, that's not our subject today we just mentioned that haha <laughs> let me say this also our basis of deliverance sometimes you have to submit yourself to a minister of deliverance some cases because sometimes the enemy is too inside you may need a particular anointing to help you just get the enemy out be delivered aha hear me there are different graces in ministers this prophetic grace given to some and not given to others this apostolic grace given to some not given to others there are gifts of healing given to some not given to others there's a teaching grace given to some not given to others they are working of miracles given to some not given to others there's a leadership grace given to some not given to others there's also deliverance grace given to some and not given to others it is not demeaning at all sometimes for you to seek a particular grace that you've seen in a particular man of god that to help you to tackle the problem you're facing and some people are suffering under oppressive power they need somebody graced to lay hands upon them under the anointing of deliverance cast out the devil they can go back to their church go back to their ministry free and enjoy serving god but some people are too into themselves god cannot help them sometimes god will put what you need in somebody else to test your humility i've actually realized every beautiful thing that god gives you you will need to beg to get it so that the proud will never receive from the lord hallelujah i've traveled in a few countries you know what is the purpose of my traveling to seek out graces i've seen by god's grace i've contacted some things that have become a blessing in my life hallelujah zachariah 1 verse 17 to 21 zachariah 1 verse 17 to 21 i'm about to finish now cry yet saying thus say the lord of hosts my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the lord shall yet confirm zion and shall yet choose jerusalem then i lifted i up mine eyes and so and behold four horns and i said unto the angel that talked with me what be this and he answered me these are the horns which have scattered judah israel and jerusalem and the lord showed me for carpenters that he said ah what come this to and he spake saying these are the horns which have scattered judah so that no man did lift up his hand and these are come to flee them to cast out the horns of gentiles which lifted up their horns over the land of judah to scatter them so god has raised carpenters in the lord to scatter the horns that are scattering God's people. The best way I can talk about carpenters is deliverance ministers. Yeah, because the deliverance ministers are brutal in nature. <laughs> and that's the nature of this ministry. Because also, they are trying to distance people from a brutal enemy that has vowed to take them to the grave. I declare whatever power has vowed to take you to the grave, today we bury it in the name of Jesus Christ. So deliverance ministry is there to waste what is wasting you. It's, where to, it's there to kill what is killing you. That's why every proper deliverance minister, they look brutal than normal because of the nature. Because carpenters, they cut. Carpenters, they do. If you go to a carpenter's shop, I mean, stamps of trees are de decapitated. They are amputated. You know, there are, there's a lot of cutting and sewing. And, and that's what the ministry of a deliverance minister in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you the last one. Our basis of deliverance. Please be attentive. This is important. This is, this is very, very, very important. And I form the basis of our tomorrow's prayer. Deliverance through prevailing prayer. One of my daughters was telling me the other day, after learning how to prevail in prayer, she closed herself in the room. And she prayed with all her heart. All of a sudden, the power of God came upon her. And she began to cough. She coughed, 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 coughed. Then the cough ceased. And she felt free. 
I told her that is what we call self-deliverance through prevailing prayer. These are kind of prayers, brothers and sisters, that prevails over evil. These are prayers that swallows infirmities. You pray until the sickness disappears. Until the swelling disappears. These are kind of prayers that overturns evil. I'm talking about prevailing prayers. I don't believe the church understands prevailing prayer. We are still religious and nice. That's why sometimes we are not able to penetrate the, the barrier in the spirit. But God is helping us in the name. There is an emergence of a new army. It's going to be a little bit red eyes and a little bit hard to understand. But the results will show them for themselves. These are particular kind of prayers. They are violent prayers. They are aggressive prayers. They are sponsored by the force of holy anger. I'm talking about deliverance through prevailing prayers. They are enough. It's enough kind of prayer. One of my sons was telling me, he got home and he saw that, that uh, the wife was sick and was coming from a prevailing prayer meeting. Hell! Ha, by the head and say in the name of Jesus spirit of infirmity go and then began to pray violently all of a sudden the wife was totally here I'm talking about those kind of prayer that turns a normal church member into a miracle worker this kind of prayers will keep pastors at least praying and seeking God because members will be performing miracles in fact some of the sick people will not even have to come to the pastor. They will not just knock the next door. And a fellow believer will cast out the devil. Cast out the tumor. Cast out the sickness. Raise the dead. I told you of a, a, a son. You know, knock somebody in the car. A, a drunk person closes the road. And by mistake knocks the person. Just to come out and discover there is no past. It's like the person has passed out. Lays hands upon the pastor, saying, In the name of Jesus, I command you come back to life. A true story. <laughs> and the man coughs, ha! <laughs> and he opens his eyes. And the mother wrote to me and told me, Pastor, thank you for teaching your children how to pray. Because the mother witnessed a resurrection from a normal, just a wonderful brother who understands the force of prevailing prayer. These are non negotiations kind of prayer. These are adamant persistent, unrelenting, stubborn, tenacious kind of prayer. These are prayers that break barriers in the spirit and causes them to melt like wax. These are fire prayers. Prayers that penetrate foundations and break evil covenants, contracts and evil agreements by setting them on fire. These prayers they bat major breakthroughs and dramatic turnarounds in the lives of men. When you're serious about praying this kind of prayer, you put off the phone. You wear easy. You lose the consciousness of time because it may last all night. After these prayers, you may have to take a shower because you're drenched with sweat. But heaven has responded. These are the kind of prayer you receive a letter of interdiction today after the night you go tomorrow you are promoted in the same company it, it overturns the verdicts of the enemy these are intensive fervent prayers when you begin to engage in this kind of prayers you forget beauty you forget your hair sometimes you have to remove the wig and put it aside and be yourself because it is not business as usual if you are serious about God and about deliverance and we are tired of some of the things we've been fighting. We must come to this level. They are weird, the religious class. They are desperate prayers. Jacob prayed this kind of prayer. He got a new name. Understand that? Jesse, just the best prayed this kind of prayers. His life permanently was transformed. That is in First Chronicles 4 and verse 9 to 10. We are learning. This prayer was prayed by Elijah. The Bible says in James 5 verse 16, Therefore confess your sins one to another. The heartfelt, persistent prayer of a righteous man when put into action, this fervent, heartfelt, persistent prayer 
when put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamic and have tremendous power. This kind of prayer, they release tremendous power. That is the level God has ordained for us. We are supposed to live a life that is defined by the one word, wonderful. In other words, full of wonders. But it's not going to happen if you're dozing, we are praying nicely, we are whispering, we are conscious, we don't look, we don't want to look weird, we don't want to be known as those people who shout. All those things we have practiced the, long, the longest time possible, they are not helping. It is not right to do the same thing and expect a different result. We must come to this dynamic and tremendous power producing prayer by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So get yourself ready because tomorrow is going to be brutal prayer for major breakthroughs and dramatic turnarounds. Father, bless your people. Let the anointing of prayer come upon them. Prosper all they do. Turn every desire, every calamity into a miracle. I cover your people with the blood of Jesus Christ. Spirit of discouragement, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness and disease disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, place your hand upon your people. Prosper them in a very mysterious way. Let this season of COVID-19 be a season of miracles, testimonies for your children. In the name of Jesus. Send the 200 minimum in the number. This weekend we are going to feed a few families. And I believe that the returns will come to you in form of blessings. Thank you for allowing me to minister to you. You remain in my prayer. See you tomorrow. God bless you.